I live, my home is provided for in large part because of you. You help provide for where I live. And now you're about to hear more story or more information about it than you ever wanted to. Uh, hopefully you can stick with me for a couple minutes. Uh, but I want to tell you quickly about where I live to, to sort of draw out an analogy for you. Um, where I live, uh, a long time ago, used to be something else, right? I guess that might be true of where all of us live. Uh, but going way back, it was something, and then some, at some point, it became farmland. Uh, so where I live, uh, prior to where I live, no one lived there. It's an allotment. I live in a, what was a new build, not so new anymore. Uh, but it used to be farmland. And so it's very exposed where I am. Maybe there were trees a long time ago. Maybe they were removed to be farmland. Maybe it was always sort of prairie. But it's reasonably flat, reasonably open where I live. Do you know what the effect of that would be, uh, being in a sort of flat, open area? If there are trees, they are not old growth trees. I've planted a few, uh, but they're not that old. Uh, if there are trees, they're not blocking the wind. And so I want to tell you this morning about wind, uh, or this afternoon. I'm talking to you about wind. Um, I uh, live in an allotment that used to be farmland. And uh, my house is really probably not all that far from my neighbor's house compared to most people. Um, and between our houses becomes a wind tunnel. Uh, because I'm the first person to live there, I did all the landscaping and all the planting. And I've lived there long enough now, in part because of you and, and your care for me, um, uh, that I've done landscaping multiple times. You know, I put stuff in, had things go wrong, and had to change it. In particular, between these two houses, what goes wrong is every shrub that I went to great effort to make sure that it was level and planted deeply, uh, all those shrubs have, uh, over time, been laid out by the wind. No matter how much stakes, I, I would put three, four stakes on them and it would snap. It, it, the wind was so powerful and so persistent that no matter what I did, I just had to get to the point where I don't have in shrubs that are that big. They have to be much lower to the ground. So good morning, good afternoon, welcome to Preparing for Sunday, where you and I take a look together at the upcoming Sunday scripture text. And this is for Pentecost, year B. Year, year B is the year of the lectionary that tells us where the readings are going to come from, but Pentecost is where we are in the church cycle. You know, we move through Christmas, uh, we move into Lent. We move into from Lent to Easter, and then the season of Easter. We just passed Ascension Day, the day uh, after Easter, after the season of Easter, the tail end of it, where Jesus ascends into heaven. Pentecost is Penta, 50. It comes 50 days after Easter. We get this every year. Depending on where Easter is, we get Pentecost. And so we're on Pentecost, May 19th, 2024. And uh, one of the th ideas of Pentecost is this wind. One of the readings is from Acts. And the Acts reading uh, tells us uh, about the Holy Spirit. And it tells us about this great rushing wind, right? And so uh, wind is, a, is a, one of the themes, one of the ideas for Pentecost. I'm also wanting to think about days where uh, you have a strong tailwind and everything feels like God is just making a way for you. Uh, and then other days where it's like perfect, like it's not too much, it's not too little. Uh, maybe some days it's like fire hose. I wish this wasn't so much. Other days it's like a dead calm and, and you just feel like I don't have the energy for this and I need a little bit of wind. If you've been in that place, you're in the place where you're thinking about why or how God works in bursts and starts and stops and how the wind kind of comes uh, this day very windy, this day perfect, this day not at all. And that's what you're thinking about with Pentecost and how God is working in our lives. And the reading uh, for this day is a, is a segmented one from the lectionary. We're in John, and, and typically I would say pause the video and read the text. Save your pause. Uh, well, maybe pause, get out your Bible. Save the reading. You're going to pause a couple times as we go. Because this, this reading is like bursts and starts of wind. And it's in little segments, and I'm going to talk about it in segments. 
so read it in segments. You're even going to hear when I tell you where it's found that it's segmented. It's not per se one big long reading. The reading is John 15 verses 16 and 27 and then 16 4 through 15. Hear that segmented bursts of wind uh, and we're going to look at those uh, kind of more independently. I will tell you that the reading on Sunday is going to feel like one flow of wind and movement. Um, but, but here it's got clear segments that I'll talk to you about. Before I talk to you about those segments, pause to go get your Bible, have that with you, and then before you pause to read, uh, let me tell you some of the backdrop of where we're at in, in John, in the Gospel of John. Let me give you its location. It's like telling you where my house is, or where your house is, or, or what the, the currents of your day is. It just sets the, the theme here, or sets the location for us. Uh, we are in a section of John that is called Jesus' Farewell Discourse. John 14 through 17 is Jesus' farewell discourse. Uh, for the sake of the story, it's farewell to the disciples. But because it's locked into this text, and because we're reading it, it's Jesus' farewell prayers, farewell well wishes, farewell uh, uh, call to action for all believers of all time. Uh, it's for the disciples, but we're overhearing it, and so it's for us. In this final, this farewell discourse, John, and John really only is the only one that talks about it this way, uh, gives five references in 14 through 17 uh, about the paraclete. P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E, -E, that comes to us from Greek. It's a Greek word that Jesus uses for the Holy Spirit in John, and there's five references. Paraclete, the spirit of truth. And that's the way John talks about it. A para is something that comes along next to you. I'm not saying parakeet. I'm not saying para soccer cleats. Paraclete. Para is alongside. Uh, it is this wind that comes alongside. Cleat is uh, this advocate, this voice, this whispering sound of wind that comes alongside. On Pentecost, we tend to compartmentalize God. You know, God the Father. Uh, we'll talk about that on some other day. Jesus the Son, we'll talk about that on Christmas. Pentecost, we'll talk about uh, the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't do that. That's bad theology to compartmentalize. When we talk about Jesus, we're also talking about the Holy Spirit, and we're going to see that today. When we talk about Jesus, we're talking about God, and we're going to see that today in this text from John 15 and 16. Um, we shouldn't compartmentalize, but what we're getting here is Jesus uh, um, telling us the wind and, and, and how God's movement happens. And that breath that we draw, that is the Spirit of God, we don't draw that uh, like, like, you know, some days it's like, <laughs> the wind has been knocked out of me, where is God? You know, I'm in grief, I'm in pain, and I don't know. Other days it's like, uh, you know, you're singing hymns going down the road, and you just feel so connected. And other days are just sort of somewhere in the middle, and the breeze is just right, and you know that you're grateful, but you're also in tune with the world, and... And, and, and what we learn is, is that God is in relationship, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that God is in relationship with us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in relationship with the church and all of its individuals, and relationships are messy, and they come in starts and stops. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, God's kingdom come. And so we hope that this swirling, wind-blowing is, is going to lead the path where it needs to go, but we know that it comes in big waves that push the shrubs over, and that's Pentecost. And other times it's dead calm, and it doesn't come at all. And days and our lives feel like that. And what we're learning over time is how to, to function well when God is dead calm, when God is the perfect, when God is the wind, and when life is those things. And that's what we're talking about today. How to function when the wind is a lot, when the wind isn't, and, and, and all that. Um, one more thing before we do the reading. In 1518, which is into Jesus' farewell discourse, he makes a clear shift. That's not part of our reading for today, but it comes almost right before our reading for today. Um, and so 1518, Jesus shifts from talking a lot about himself and what he's done for his believers, and then he shifts to talking about the believer's relationship to the world. And we heard that some in last week's text where it was like, 
Um, you know, I came, I, I suffered, I knew death, I'm risen, and I am now in and with you. And now you're, you're, who you are is, is part of the work of who I am in the world. And so it's not just Jesus' relationship with us, it's also now our relationship with the world. The word there is cosmos, and cosmos means creation. And so it's our relationship with other people, with our environment, with God's creating work. And, and so lots of theological stuff going on here, right? And, and now you're stuck sitting in it. And really the theme I'm trying to get us moved through this uh, complicated reading with is this wind, this Holy Spirit that's just pulses. And some days it's a lot, and some days you feel it, and other days you're like, where's that spirit gone? And we remember that that spirit is Jesus himself. It's God, God's self in us. And, and uh, we, don't, we don't compartmentalize that. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about relationships and, and, and what it is to be a human in relationship to God and to the world and with each other. And that God is in the midst of this. And that's that breath, that wind. And sometimes we have big evidence of it. Sometimes we've gone a long time and haven't felt it. And that's what we're talking about here with, with, with the imagery of Pentecost and this reading from John. And so to begin to enter into it, here's a pause point. And you would read 15, 26, and 27, part of this Sunday's reading. So that's a pause point. Um, um, to talk about that, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you again about something in John, but it's about 26 and 27. In John, there are seven I am statements. If you Google Jesus I am statements in John, you will get one gabazillion hits. You could read between now and the rest of your life and all of eternity and never stop and, and read about this stuff. The I am statements in John. So one quick point about them, and I'll leave it at this. Um, I am the vine. You are the branches. These I am statements. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are the one who goes on the way, who knows the truth, who lives the life. Each of these I am statements come with a you are. And so in 15, 26, and 27, we begin to get this you are. The God is the wind, and we are travelers on the wind. God is the wind beneath our wings, and we are uh, created by God and riding this wind. And uh, so it's Jesus switching from I am to you are, who, who I am, who you are. And, and the word here that deals with this witnessing and, and, and who we are is martyrio. Martyrio. The root is martyr. It's come into our language. It's the word martyr. To witness is to martyr. And that should get your attention as much as it gets mine because martyrdom is not great. Uh, for those of you that are joining us Sunday for this Bonhoeffer class, we consider him, I consider him a martyr of the church. Uh, someone who knew who God made him, knew the situation of the world that he was set in, and died for it. And that's a cessation of breath. That's God breathes his breath into Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer is riding the wings of it, and maybe he's like, this is too much wind, it's blowing, it's a wind tunnel, it's whistling between these houses. God, why so much? Um, I can't always answer why God uh, does the things God does. Um, uh, but that's the word of witness here. It's not about anymore who, who I am, meaning who God is, I am, but who we are because God is. Uh, it's, that's that Pentecost shift is more, less about who God is and more about who we are because of God. Um, and we're the witnesses, the martyrio. That word martyr was put on the people who died for their faith because their witness was the most powerful witness. Um, they're martyrs, they're witnesses of the faith. At the end of verse 27, you also get from the beginning, you also get the in the beginning flavoring. That wind that blew that shrub over between those houses did not do it, you know, I did not put it in the ground, level it out, leave and come back the next day and it was already done. It, 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 it was this whole uh, process of from the beginning of that planting, I was like, boy, it's starting to 
is it even level anymore? And I staked it and I did all this stuff in the wind. I'd go to bed at night and I would hear it whistle between the houses out in this open field kind of. And I'd go out there and I'd be like, my shrubs. And then over time, after years and years of this, it's like laying flat on the ground. I'm like, I give up. I had to take it out. God does not give up on us. Not great analogy there. But I, the shrub, I had to be like, but it did not do that. It wasn't like I planted it and it was like, boom. You know, we, we hit these days where, you know, like, oh, it's coming at us and, or, or we really feel God and, and, and that moves us somewhere. Um, but it, it's a time thing. It happens over all this time. The witnessing that I do and you do is not the totality of the witness of who God is. It's, it's, one, it's, it's a sand on the beach of, of, of God's kingdom coming. And it's an important piece of it. Um, and, and it wouldn't happen without our witness and who God makes us. Uh, but we're also part of this bigger thing. And that's the complexity of what's happening here. I'm trying to really get at the flavor of it, and it is a lot of theology and a lot of concept here. Um, the next segment that I'll look at with you is John 16, 4 through 7. So this is a pause point. You hit pause and you read John 16, 4 through 7. Again, on Sunday, you're going to feel like it's just one big long reading. Um, but I'm hitting the segments here for this because there's just such here, so much here. In this segment, we get the Jesus is leaving talk. Uh, again, Jesus farewell discourse, meaning he's, he knows pretty clearly he's leaving. And then we could ask the question, why? We're windless out here. It's a dead calm. Why would Jesus come, die, uh, experience death, be risen, walk in our midst? Why not just stay? I mean, boy, the job would be way easier if like, I could be like, hey, I'm here today with Jesus and I'm asking you to believe in him. And it would be awfully easy if he was here. Well, the truth of it is, is this text is telling us that God is here. And that the wind comes in these seasons. A, a beautiful day with just that mild breeze gives way to this windy, crazy thunderstorm day. And that God is looking at creation from the beginning and is in relationship. And sometimes it's throttle down on the wind and sometimes it's throttle up. And, 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 and that's all this reaction to creation. But the wind is here, and it takes all the witnesses of, of the church, your parents and my parents and our grandparents and people you've worshipped with, and that taking up is this uh, windy days and not windy days, but living in relationship with, co with the cosmos. And so Jesus can leave because he's not really going. The wind is here. I can give you evidence of it. It's proved. It's blowing over this tree, right? All right. So the next section is John 16, 8 through 11. This is a pause, and then you hit that next little bit. And again, on Sunday, I'm not going to segment it. We, we're not going to compartmentalize the text or the Trinity. But but here, we're, I'm doing that a little bit just to give myself a little calm in the harbor in the storm to, to, to hit on and talk about. So this is 16, 8 through 11. And there I want to point out to you two things. They happen in verse 8 and they happen in verse 10. It's, di it's diakasio. Uh, diakasio. And, and that is the only occurrence of that word in John is in verse 8 and in verse 10. And it's, the, it's, uh, um, it's sort of the work of a deacon. It's who we are because he is. The breath comes into your lungs and God made you who you are. And yeah, some days you don't feel that wind and you want it. And some days you're like, I too much of it. Uh, but, but all of that is your experience of who God makes you. And your experience is important. And it's what you give witness to. And to diacon, a deacon, a diaconate is the people who do the work of the church. And this is the action of that work. And you're doing it and you're seeing that here in 8 and 10. Got a little fun note here. Um, it talks about judgment here, or the judgment of the Spirit in, in this section. That judgment is God deciding how much throttle to put on the wind. Because we're independent and in relationship with God, and God is relationship, if we're having a bad day, God might say, here's the kind of wind my creation needs today. Or if it's, you know, it might need the throttle on the wind machine, um, you know, and, and for my poor shrub. Is God relating, uh, interacting, reading God's creation and 
and judging. That's God's job. And so we are the eagles on the wind, and, and we're just sort of witnessing to the God who's throttling and what it feels like to be throttled down, to be throttled up, to go through a good day with the wind, with a bad day without. These are the dialogue, the witness that we're having. And here's what's important. If you look closely, that judgment is not just for God's people. It's the cosmos. This is happening for the cosmos, for God's creation. Uh, we, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, gracious God. And it's that wind, and it's in jump, and starts, and it's the breath that is the breath of the cosmos. And sometimes we're doing it well, and it's throttled right, and sometimes we're not, and God's throttled over here. And this is this jumps and starts and gusts and stops relationship of God's work in the kingdom. And ultimately, what we're being asked to believe is that we are not fearful of what is happening in the world around us. We are hopeful that God is at the throttle and that whatever it is we're seeing that feels windless is, is okay because we have the promise of the Pentecost that tells us that sometimes the gusts come in big groups and, and we remember those witness times in times when we don't have it so that we're not fearful so that we're relating to our world with this witness that's like hey this doesn't have to be it we have hope and 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 this is so much of what's going on here in john and in pentecost and in who we are in this farewell discourse the next and the judgments for the whole cosmos important to see there uh, the next section is uh, john 16 12 through 15 which is the ending part of this reading you'll pause it you'll hit that and again, I'm going to read this as a whole. One of the big things there is hodogio. Hodogio. That's the um, Greek context there. Uh, that's the guide. That's the Holy Spirit. That's that wind that is beneath our wings that will guide us. Hados, which is one part of that word, is the way. Ding, 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 ding. I am the way. God is the way. God is this tunnel that is the wind tunnel. And God is the wind. And God is the breath and God is the hados, the way. The ago, hados ago, is led on the way. You're, you're, you're being led, you're being pushed with this gentle, sometimes too much, sometimes too little breeze based on where God is relating to the world on that throttle. Um, that's, that, that's the theological story of these verses. And I do this on preparing for Sunday because when you get to church on Sunday, you're going to hear this as a reading and so much of this is just going to blow right over your heads. And I, I, I think it's important to sit in here because what we're hearing is the story of it's normal to feel the wind too much, not enough of God's presence or of our days. That that's the God's at work in the world, that God has not abandoned us, but God is the wind for each of us. And why we are in relationship is to, to you know, it's not a single shrub. It's a whole grove of who we are standing in this wind and being guided by God. And that's the, the real sort of witness of this text. And it's not about just the witness of the text and of who God is, but it's the promise of who we are. And so what I, what I, I'm not all the way sure what I'm going to do with the sermon Sunday, but I'm not going to do all this. But but I'm going to hit on, hopefully in a more succinct, more fun way, that we shouldn't compartmentalize God, that the relationship God part of God is, is the most important part of, of this. Don't compartmentalize, like it's not just the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it, it's, it's all these things are who God is. That it comes in leaps and starts, that sometimes it's like breaking the boundaries, like too much wind. Sometimes there's no wind at all and you just want a little bit. Sometimes it's just perfect, right? It's, it's Goldilocks of the wind here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that with the sermon, but if you've spent time here with the text, I don't now have to do that in the sermon. You, you've done it. You're, you're ready to um, be blown by the wind of the Holy Spirit in our Pentecost worship. And, um, you know, we're Lutheran, so it won't be too Pentecostal. It'll be pentecost -y. Um But we're Lutherans. We're too calm for this to be too crazy. Um, but you never know. Maybe the whole wind will break loose. Uh, we'll see. So uh, I'm using that analogy of the wind because it's wind, the Holy Spirit, you know, all this stuff. Uh, 
broken down parts of this text, um, and I hope that sitting with it kind of helps you see it parsed out so that when I give you uh, this sort of quick overview of the sermon, you can catch on to little pieces in the wind and, and, and say, oh, I understand, in the, in the midst of the flush of that hot air out of my mouth that you uh, hear little bits are like, yeah, I can cling to that. You are who God made you. I know that some days are windy and some days are not. And uh, I hope that you know that I and Paul, thanks to you, is here for you. And, and we're in this together. And uh, if we're in an age of God's sort of dead call, what's God trying to tell us with that? And we've already been told that God will not always be dead called. And we will keep the hope that through us, God's breath enters and is this ex 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 exhaled and all of creation is moved and that God continues to be at work. That is the promise of who God, we are in Christ. And that is the story of Pentecost and how God is changing the world. It's the story of your life and that your life and your minute to minute existence matters. All right, thanks for joining me. I hope you, you stay safe between now and Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.